Hello and welcome to another video in this creative motion series. So in the last video we got up to, I think we took a look at the object and object index. Um, and we've looked at the point and polygon. <clears throat> so we're now we're moving into this random node here. So I'm going to slightly touch upon the, um, the random node but most of this video is going to be based on this ray collision and we'll be looking at how we can um, set this up in Expresso and also recreate this ray collision using Python um, so recreating this node from scratch using Python so just to get this node out of the way it's, it's really really simple really basic really I mean it pretty much does what what it says it does there it just creates random values um, and it creates you random values in lots of different ways okay so You've got an input here, so the input is a random seed. So at, at the moment, it'll have um, just a one defined random seed value. So if you want to get like different random results, just change the random seed here. Um, if you want your, all your outputs to be random but consistently random, um, then you know use the same value. So yeah just to show how this works really quickly i mean this is a really useful node as well and that's um, the print console you can find that if you go down to um, system presets and i think yeah it's just here under string and you just pull that out what that will allow you to do is just print directly into your console so like how we've been um, reading the results out of through through python you can print to the same console um, through express so so you know, if it's if you kind of need to read more information, just you need things to be a little bit clearer than using the result node. Then um, yeah, use this. It makes things a lot more understandable, and um, when you're problem solving things, um, it's a lot easier to use this. So let's just link up boolean into input one. And you can see we've got a value here. I value hit play. You can see it's jump. It's just giving us random values between true and false. Um, and you can do that with all these other settings. So you can do that with integer. Again, we'll just play so we get these values coming out. So we've got um, <clears throat> random integer, integer values. Uh, you can do that with real, so you get values with decimal places, um, random vector values as well. So we're going to have uh, three different um, values contained in the vector, and all those will just randomize each frame as well. So you can see how you could use this. Um, the boolean value, you could use that for like a randomized on off switch. Um, and uh, the, yeah, there's lots of uses for this really. I mean, you could use this in pretty much most setups. Okay, so let's just delete these. So I've got that out of the way. Um, I just pulled in the ray collision, so that's the next one in the list. This is really, I mean, this is really, really powerful. Right? I mean, this essentially how this works is I'll just try to quickly illustrate how it could work on this so if you can imagine you've got um, one object so we have a null which is here and this ray collision node um, it works off um, position so it needs to know the position of the object so you could pull in the position of, um, of one point which could be a null um, then it kind of works out the orientation so and it also has like a length um, but this is kind of it's not all those values are not kind of used so much in Expresso but they are used more in uh, in Python so if you can see if I draw a line out from here you can see we'll get a collision on the mesh now this this mesh needs to be polygonal so we'll get a collision at this point here. Um, <clears throat> so you can get all sorts of things out of this. So you can get like obviously the distance um, between the two points. You can get vector coordinates um, of the offset of the point in space um, where it collides. And then you can obviously link other objects to, to those points. Um, there's, there's lots really you can do with this. So. One of, the, one of the cool things you could do is like if you if you needed to um, so in this example what we're going to do is we're going to have a cone um, and it's going to follow the surface so we're going to have this um, this ray collision kind of be directed to a null so between two nulls 
this null is going to move like randomly up and down. So then we're going to get different collisions at different points um, on this mesh. And then we're going to tell this um, cone here just to follow that collision point on each frame. Um, and what we'll do, just kind of demonstrate, you know, some some uses for this. I've linked a, a tracer object into the into this. Um, and what what I've done, I've just created like what actually I've created one a matrix, and the matrix only has one um, object in it. So we've linked the matrix as a child of this, so we only have one object, um, and then we're tracing from that single object. Because the problem is if you use the matrix object directly on the cone, it'll trace all the points. So if you want to just kind of say this is like a pencil going around a spherical object, um, you want to kind of do like some kind of draw and sketch effect, you could do it this way. So we'll just trace a spline around the object and it'll be, it'll stick flat to the surface. Okay, so let's just clear this. And so we'll just pull in, we'll pull in the object. So pull in sphere. And just link up the object's uh, parameters. Okay, and now we've got <coughs> ray point one, ray point two. So ray point one will be, um, or it can, ray point one can be this null. Um, so we'll link that to the global position. Um, and then we've got the second null, which is outside. We'll just pull this in and we'll link that to the global position as well. And now what we should get, we should get um, some collision data. So just to kind of read out and show you how this is working, let's just pull in the printer console and just read that data straight into this. So straight into the console, we'll clear that. Um, and oops. Okay, so this collision here is um, a Boolean state, so it's, it's telling us whether it's colliding or not, and it's always going to collide because it's between these two points here. So we, what else? The other thing we need to get is like the distance, or you, can, you know, you can pull out the distance on it. You've got um, the hit position, um, the face normal normal all these different things but for what we need it for we'll just use the hit position so break this link in hit position into the input and then you should see okay so for some reason I had um, this test only box checked so I was that's why it wasn't working I think so I've just unchecked this and now it's reading out the values so again it's a good way to kind of see if you actually you know, getting anything um, out of this. And if you're not getting anything out of it, you know, then you know there's no point connecting up anything else. So now if we play this, we're getting all these random values. So these are the collision points um, that are changing um, between these two. So it's colliding at different points as this is moving around. Um, and then this null, I've just placed it up with a, a vibrate tag just so it randomly moves around. Okay, so now we have that, let's just... Um, move the the cone so we'll just pull cone in and we'll just link up the hit position to the global position and got on this there we go there you go and now you can see we're kind of um we're moving the um cone across the surface and with that tracer applied as well you can see how the um how we're just tracing um across the surface just from the um axis point from this now if I just play you through um, and we rotate around, you can see how all these um, splines are stuck to the surface. You can smooth those out if you want to by just changing the um, interpolation type on the spline just to make it smoother. But you know, you can kind of, hopefully you can see like a, a, a really good use for using this ray collision node. So there's so, there are so many different things you can use this for. So now we've done it in Expresso, we'll just move over into um, Python and uh, recreate the same thing. So I'll just clear this. What I'll do is deactivate the Expresso tag um, and then open up the Python tag. Let's just get rid of this because we don't need that. Um, okay, so 
Now we've activated the uh, Python tag here, so we'll leave it there. We should get the same result. Yeah, so we've got the same kind of thing going on here. Um, just by using this small amount of code, really. So let's just go back, clear this, uh, and we'll just go through through this, and you can kind of we'll kind of like look at what data is being read out at each point from the top to the bottom. So at the moment we've got all the all of these. Now these are just kind of user data um, inputs um, that we're declaring into variables. So if I click on this and we go to the user data, we've got slots for different things here. So we've got a slot of the um, the collider, which is the mesh. So collider is this. Oops. Um, let's go back to this. Yeah, so slide is the mesh, um, receive ray um, is a null, generate ray is another null, and then we've got spawn objects, which is the cone. So we've got two, null, two nulls, and we want to generate the ray between the two, two between both the nulls. Um, we want to collide on the mesh, um, and then we want to move this cone to that collision point, and then animate that you know per frame. So you can see these four here are just being declared in here. So we're doing that by um, how we've done it before, so um, <clears throat> just ignore these two. So this one, because the ta because the tag um, here, so we've got start object, start position. So it's just getting, getting the object and then we're creating, um, getting the offset position from um, that object. And then here we've got the finish object, which is a different null. Um, so we're pulling that user data, and then what we're doing here is we're declaring the um, position again for that. Um, and this does pretty much the same thing. So this is pretty much the same as this. So um, next up, we've, we're declaring another variable. So this is the collision mesh. Um, and then we've got cone, which is the object that we're going to move around the surface. So pretty straightforward, just repeating the same kind of like process all, all the way through there. Um, then we're declaring a new variable here. So RC is a variable for ray collision. Um, and that just creates a, the ray collider kind of in memory. Um, and then we need to assign um, that to the object. So the object is... See, this collider here which is the mesh um, and we're just assigning that ray collision to work on that object so it knows what to look for then once we've done that we've got this uh, command so with the variable declared ray collision um, the dot intersect um, is like a, a command on that object so now we've got everything kind of set up it's looking for a start position so the start position is this position here so start position goes into this slot here finish position is now th this works off like a, a initial position from where to emit array um, and then the next slot should be the orientation or it's kind of like the direction now I've put in the um, push position coordinates for the second null um, and that seems to work fine it seems to like calculate um, the the right kind of orientation um, and true just declares this as being um, just, just declares a, a variable being active and it's always going to be active because it's in, inside the sphere um, okay so just clear this then moving down we've got position so position is the ray um, collision variable and then we've got get nearest intersection um, so you can you can declare you can get the intersections um, from a few different commands like this one obviously just gets the first one the first point where it's the ray is being hit now if you if you kind of like collide with different parts of the mesh within that ray length then um, you'll get multiple um, versions of these and you can kind of pick out which one for which one you want to 
um, pull a position value out of from um, from an index value. Um, but with this command, it's just really simple and just picks the first one. Um, I, I seem to have like when I was trying to do it the other way by using um, index values, then it seems to like mess everything up. So this seems to work okay for me. So now we've got that intersection um, pulled into pause. Then once you've got all that data, so this will declare declare like lots of different types of data so it'll give you um it'll give you like the distance from the collision so it give you like that it'll give you the normal direction from the polygon um from the collision um it'll give you the offset um vector from that um it'll give you stuff regarding the form there's just there's, there's loads of um bits of data that you can read out and use from this so that's where that this comes into play and that's where you kind of declare this so you know we've got all that data so all all these values that we've read out is held in here and then all we're doing with this one is we're just pulling out um, the hit position um, okay so then this is going to print just that hit position there and you can see you can see actually here all those different values. So you've got this distance value here. Um, let's just pull this across. Let's just clear this. We've got yeah the normal. We've got the um, if it's hit a back face and um, the hit position stuff to do with um, face normal. There's loads of stuff in there. Um, but yeah, like I say, we're already using kind of um, the hit position on this. So you can see as I hit play, all these values are changing. It's reading out different kind of different values on each frame. Um, yep, yeah, once we've done that, all we're doing then is now we've got the position, the contact point, um, read into this variable, POS. All we're doing there is we're setting the absolute position of the um, of the object. Um, of the collision point, and we're just move, so that all that's doing is just moving the axis point of the cone to the collision point. Um, yeah, and we're just printing the data. That's not going to affect anything, it's just so we can see what's going on here. So, yep, yeah, that's that's doing that pretty much. Um, I hope you've uh, found this useful. If you have found it useful, please um, do like the video, and um, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.